to establish the Turkish Empire. <laughs> Elementary school, first year. This is how we were all brought up. And it's hard to get over it. So that's why they try to combine left with, with Kemalism, left with nationalism. And unfortunately, that uh, they still adhere to the Central Asia being Turkish and uh, those dreams. Uh, uh, today it's Syria, tomorrow it's going to be China. But uh, Uyghurs are being used inside this as a propaganda for Turkish nationalism and Turkish expansionism. So I have one last question. Sure. Um, I'm the last one. So I think Steve's also raised this issue about South Korea. It's, is it a third world fascist country or is it an imperialist country? But well, hold on. The thing is that, uh, first of all, fas fascism is consistent with imperialism. That actually is the form. Uh, fascism is the form in which imperialism caught in its uh, lot, married contradiction finds its expression when it's com completely controlled like Germany was to break out of that that's how how it, it goes to that form and you're saying to survive in, in a contradiction the third world countries they don't have the freedom to break out of the clutches of imperialism therefore they, uh, they have no choice but to have fascist forms. I think that's your theory. Uh, and I think uh, maybe it, in Turkey is a perfect example of it, but uh, the problem with that is that there are models that are uh, not quite fitting into it. Uh, India was a model that didn't fit into your, your thing, but I, Modi is kind of tending towards that, so uh, I will be speaking on that and differentiate it, but uh, this third world fascism suggests to me and also your comment about how the left was crushed in uh, Turkey by simply by, by repression. I don't think left can be simply cr be crushed by l repression, you know, uh, otherwise we have no future. So uh, you need to address that issue of there must have been something more than repression. Often, I mean, there was a lot of repression in Russia, but time came when the China, same thing, a lot of repression. But when time came, uh, it was overcome. But why does it get overcome in Turkey? Or uh, at other places. Uh, yes, there were other issues, but the issue is, again, uh, as Lenin calls it, subjective conditions. When you have a revolutionary period and you have the objective conditions mature, meaning that the contradictions of capitalism is there, people cannot live anymore under capital. The rulers cannot rule, the rules will not be ruled, but then that's not enough for a revolution. What is needed is the subjective condition, which is, I think, Steve also brought up as the Labour Party. A leader, vanguard, or something. That's why I want. Uh, I'm suggesting that this should be another session that we t uh, talk over this. So the uh, the leaders of the revolution or the left were not able to lead the masses, and it took only about like several weeks to destroy the left opposition in Turkey. That's why another another discussion is that that's why most of the left in Turkey never claim that they are the party because a party survives. Party is ready for all weather. They fight like Lenin's party did. So the other left, so it looks like they were not prepared for this. It's something that is a lesson learned. So yes, it was. So starting from that, going back to Korea, I. I don't think again that we have seen the uh, seen the end of Korea. As the contradictions go in, uh, uh, as you know, my fascism analysis, I said open fascism versus the concealed fascism. I believe Korea is in concealed fascist state now. Okay, but when the time comes, it's not like Germany. You know, it's not a big deal to go into open fascism like Turkey. 
So it can flip flop easily between uh, you know open and uh, closed fascism. But uh, let's uh, let's not keep the classical fascist definition in our heads. That was Germany, but other r r ways of fascism that rules is you have the parliament, you have the unions, you have the resistance, and so on and so forth. But the government is uh, fully in charge, and they will crack your head if you don't talk the line. Sorry, okay. uh, I think I think the time is up, so we got to stop here because twelve thirty is our sharp deadline today. Thank you, Mehmet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Just one quick announcement, if I can have your attention for two minutes, David, David, excuse me, can I have your attention for just two minutes? Some of you have already heard about this. On June 9th, the speaker here in the morning will...